Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I'm going to continue the second half of my discussion of uh, an introduction to uh, narrative research. Um, this discussion into narrative research is a subset of a, a larger discussion that I'm having through many, many different videos uh, into the methods, various methods of qualitative research. Um, as I said before, the research that I'll be discussing will cover six forms of um, qualitative research. I'll do narrative research, and I, I did the first half of narrative research, I'm doing the second half in this video. Then I'll do phenomenological research in two halves. Then I'll do participatory action research in two halves. I'll do grounded theory in two halves, ethnography in two halves, uh, and case study in two halves. So that's, I think it's six. It, it'll be narrative, um, phenomenological, um, participatory action, grounded research, ethnography, and case study. So we'll do six different forms of qualitative um, research. Um, and the point for me doing this is not to give you a comprehensive account of qualitative research, but a supplement to what you already know, or um, to satisfy some interest into what you might have about qualitative methods of research. Um, in qualitative methods of research, it's important more than anything that you, you find as a researcher, the potential researcher, um, a research model that best fits your interests, right? Um, you might be interested in hearing the stories that people have to tell. If you're interested in hearing the stories that people have to tell and making sense and meaning and significance and applying um, different theories to the stories that people have to tell, this model uh, would be the best model for you. So I'm gonna go through and as I said, introduce each of the six models not only am I going to introduce each of the six models, I'm going to give you examples of various forms, aspects of, of each of the six models. And if what I'm saying sounds like something that's interesting to you, then you might want to use that research model in, in your thesis preparation or your dissertation preparation, whatever. Um, again, most of the students, most of the people that watch my videos are graduate students, so I'm making these videos for them. Uh, with that being said, let's begin. So this is uh, an, still an introduction. to uh, methods of qualitative research. And this is section 1.2, section 1.2 in the notes. Um, again, the notes, if you want to gain access to the lecture notes, uh, a banner will pop up, click the banner, it'll take you to the PDF. Go through the PDF, you can follow along. Um, you can look in the description box, click the link in the description box, it'll take you to the PDF as well. Click it, print it out, follow along. Uh, this is what I'm using to guide the research. Also, um, the, the research was really constructed using um, Creswell, John W. Creswell's uh, second edition of the Qualitative Inquiry and Research Design, Choosing Among Five Approaches. Um, Creswell's book, for me, is an excellent uh, introduction into the various methods of uh, qualitative uh, research design, but I'm supplementing that information with many, many different authors, um, all of which you'll see throughout the notes in the in, in, in my notes. Um, and as I said, this is more of an introduction to the various forms of uh, qualitative research. All right, so to continue the second half and the final half of narrative research. Um, in this discussion, what I'm going to do is talk about five procedures for conducting narrative research. Again, like I said in previous videos on narrative research, I'm not, as, I'm not suggesting that these five um, procedures for conducting narrative research are in any sense exhaustive. Um, these are just suggestions. Um, there might be more than these five. Okay, so these are five procedures for procedures for conducting narrative research. The first is to recognize is that narrative research is best implemented among individuals or a small number of subjects, right? Um, the best N for narrative research is, is typically less than, I would say, less than five. Um, you really, if you're going to really, really do narrative research, you really, really do it well, you don't want a huge population, right? You don't want a huge swath of the population. You want 20, 25 participants. That's way too much data to collect, right? I'd say a good, a good N is, is, is about five. 
And you can do really, really good narrative research with just one individual, right? Um, that will be for you and your committee members to decide. Um, but as I said, depending on whatever the topic is that might interest uh, and might be guiding your research, it's important to recognize that there's going to be a lot, a lot of data that you're going to get. I mean, an hour's conversation can be uh, an hour's conversation can be, you know, 50, 60 pages uh, transcribed, depending on how fast the person talks, depending depending on what uh, the level of engagement is, right? So, um, best narrative research five procedures is you know first to keep your number of participants. You want to keep your number of, that's supposed to be a downwards arrow, um, keep the number of participants that you have, the number of subjects that you're going to engage in your research uh, low, right? Keep it low. Um, it's not for me to decide what that number should be. That's for your committee to decide. If you're writing a thesis or a dissertation, whatever, uh, whatever it might be, um, you want to talk to your committee members, your, 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 your chairs, and find out what they think is a suitable number, and then go with that. But more than likely, it's going to be a very small number if you're deciding to use um, narrative research as your model. Um, the next is you want to collect what's known as field, collect field texts, right? Um, field texts, which are collected gatherings of the subject stories, right? This is the data. This is the raw data that you're going to have in your research. You want to collect this information basically what was said in the interview between yourself and your participant because it's this information that you're going to need in order to fuel and direct your research, right? It's important to recognize that without this data, you don't have anything, right? That's the whole point of qualitative research is that we need the data that we work with um, are human stories, right? They're the stories told by human beings, right? Uh, and there's a lot of significance, there's a lot of meaning in the stories that they tell. Um, how we engage the participant is important, but not only how we engage the participant, but how we collect that information is also equally important, right? There are various methods for various people, depending on uh, what your, your tastes are, right? There's a number of ways that this can be collected. I'm not gonna, you know, go through all of this. You can journal, you can collect audio, uh, you can use letters, documents, you can use video, VID, and so on and so forth, right? So there's many different ways where you can, as a researcher, collect this field text, right? You can collect this data from the participants. Um, me, I used uh, primarily audio and journaling for um, for collecting my information, I did more of a phenomenological study um, for my dissertation. But if you're using a narrative method, if you're using a phenomenological method, no matter what it is that you're using, no matter which of the six models that I'll talk about that you end up using um, to guide your research, you're going to want to make sure that you collect that information. And also, just as a quick FYI, back it up. <laughs> back it, Triple back it up, right? Because especially, unfortunately, no diss to the PC, because I, I'm a PC man myself, but I lost uh, a lot. I lost a lot of stuff, uh, and I got in the habit of like making physical copies and you know backing up my virtual copies with physical copies, and then creating accounts in cyberspace where I could upload data to servers and blah 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 blah. So back up your data, um, because if you lose your data, you can't. It, it, it's it's not going to happen. I know your advisors wouldn't allow it. I wouldn't allow my grad students to do it. If you know you interview someone and you lose the interview because your computer crashes. It's difficult to take a participant back to that experience, to go through another interview with the participants asking the same questions that they've already answered, right? It's a basically a one-shot deal. Um, so you want to make sure that however you collect that data, right, if it's audio, you take that audio, you back it up in your computer, you bring it to a, a CD, you put that CD in a warehouse somewhere, right? Um, because, you know, I, I've, I as a graduate student have my own horror stories. I'm sure you as graduate students are researchers have your own horror stories, make sure you back up, make sure you back up your data.